the whole idea is worth spreading has been really important to me. And so we're bringing a little bit of TED here to Bloomington next May with TEDx Bloomington and in the hopes that not only will people get good feelings by watching these videos, but you'll also be moved to improve your life, improve the community. Now, here's the part. Everybody close your eyes. I know this is a meme. Close your eyes, take a breath, and think, even if nothing changed in this moment, could I feel a little bit happier? I'll bet the answer is yes, so I invite you to do it. Feel better right now. Happiness is available. Help yourself. Thank you. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Lucy. Steve Bolin. Come on, Steve Bolin. Come on. Up on the stage. You got to adjust that mic. You need an extra minute. It's a little bit tall. How, how, can, you, bit. how can you be happy with Do you just want to pick it up? Do you just want to hold it in your hand? No, no. I'll, no, I'm, you got can, it. Can you hear me? All right. All right. No, I'm, I can't be happy till I'm done with this. <clears throat> You'll see why in a minute when you're ready. My life changed the day I read the article that will appear on the next slide. At last, there was a term. Did we not click it? There it is. At last, there was a term for characteristics that had plagued me all my life that hadn't just been some moral failing of mine. I got a professional confirmation of Asperger syndrome in 2002. People who know me are surprised to hear this. You seem so social, Steve. If you're Aspie, how could you be presenting like this to us now? I think the Emmy-winning biopic of Temple Grandin demonstrates handily that people with autism can learn to interact socially. The Bible for mental health diagnosis is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. The American Psychiatric Association updates it about every 15 years. In the DSM-5, due out in 2013, the APA will eliminate Asperger's syndrome as a diagnosis separate from autism, which has had a greater stigma. But I'm actually looking forward to the so-called high-functioning end of the autism spectrum. I happen also to be on the Greek language spectrum. Uh, Aftismos literally means selfness. Autism is nothing more than congenital selfishness. Because selfishness is inherently a survival trait. We all have moments when we must look to ourselves first. For example, uh, this, I'm supplied to go in a little slow here. The, for example, the flight attendant on your flight will say, put the oxygen mask on yourself before helping other passengers. Like Asperger's, autism's a syndrome as well. Syndromo means on the same road, a collection of symptoms, some or all of which can manifest. A wide range of people from uh, mildly to profoundly can still be on the same road. I think autism's part of the larger spectrum of selfishness, which everyone is on. On one end of the spectrum is people. On the other end, things. On this end, there's complete giving of oneself to others. On the other end, a complete lack of awareness of them where even people are just other objects in the background. The autistic stereotype is the canner's kid, rocking in a corner, insensate, utterly unable to communicate, distracted even by his autonomic functions. Aspies, on the other hand, are closer to the middle. They're technically minded, but socially only semi-functional. The autistic brain struggles to synthesize sensory input or coordinate a response. Have you ever met someone whose every sentence out of his mouth is about, say, snakes or baseball cards, and they can't talk about anything else? That's called perseveration. Uh, it's an example of a symptom. If I, and when I perseverate, and I will, please just come up and tell me. I need to know. Another 
uh, example is subtext as a foreign language. My mother is fluent in English, except for one thing, delivering a punchline. But that's something she can still do in her native Greek. In autism, all subtext is basically a foreign language. We can learn to speak it, but we'll always be interpreting. Here's another big fat Greek word. Prosopo means face, agnosia means non-recognition. There's a part of your brain, the fusiform gyrus, just for processing faces. With prosopagnosia, that GPU is crap. Mine's not bad, but eye contact can make me lose my train of thought. Trying to reckon with the obscure intentions of people on the autism spectrum got me thinking about the similarly, es the similarly esoteric science of semiotics. It's the study of the tools we use to represent meaning, signs and symbols. Arguably the greatest 20th century semiotician was Thomas Sibiak. The Semiotic Society of America's highest honor is to name someone a Sibiak Fellow once every three or four years. His wife, for whom I once worked briefly, told me once about a task put to him by the government. The waste in a nuclear dump needs 10,000 years to break down safely, at least. But the oldest written language in existence is maybe half that old. How should the government design a repository and a system of signage to keep people away from here for 100 centuries? In a 1984 paper, CBI concluded that no system was guaranteed to work. His best suggestion, set up a religion around the waste dump. An atomic priesthood, he called it, who would keep people away with superstition instead of science. The DOE tried coming up with something anyway. They tried coming up with signage anyway. Uh, they came up with a landscape of thorns, up here is forbidding blocks. After the combine, I'm starting a band called the Menacing Earthworks. <laughs> I like Munch's scream here, along with another face expressing pain. Not only is everyone on the selfishness spectrum, everyone's an amateur semiotician. Being social is learning to interpret all the signs we get from others. School teaches us some of these symbols, but gestures, body language, expressions, not everyone learns these by osmosis. I love this TV show. Tim Roth's team of deception experts solve cases via the science of emotional expression. The human face is a natural lie detector. Certain emotions, fear, anger, happiness, disgust, contempt, no people can hide. People with autism may not be Buddhas, but yes, we're emotionally capable. We just suck at semiotics, at, expecting, at, at, at detecting most social meaning. We can't read you. The most important signs, your faces, are all Greek to us. If I dare flirt with Latin for a second to make a greater point, the APA is sort of making Aspies into what I might call semi-autics. Nobody really wants to be a buzzkill, not even people on the spectrum. For you neurotypicals out there, let me try and translate. We've only ever wanted to get along. The next time we make eye contact with you, however poorly, remember the help we need is in facial literacy. Semi-autics, when they're not stuck in their own brains, ask of you nothing more than tutoring in your personal semiotics. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. I think that's your third one. You've done all three ignites with us, so that's awesome. We now have Amantha. You might want to fix that mic there. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Steve.